again and welcome to another installment of Benadorm Bites from here at my YouTube channel Benadorm and Beyond. This is a sixth in my new series of vlogs and for those of you who haven't caught the others, Benadorm Bites aims to show a mixture of footage and clips of your favourite resort on a regular basis. These will respond to viewers' requests, show things that I've found interesting or funny, or just provide updates, news and information of events that are happening here in the town. If you've only just found my channel, I produce original, positive and informative videos on a weekly basis about Benidorm where I have lived for many years and the surrounding areas. So if you enjoy this vlog, please consider becoming a subscriber so you'll never miss any new content as I upload it in the future. So let's get started. Today's first video clip shows you what to expect when arriving into Alicante Airport at the moment and also how to get the local Alsa bus service into Benidorm. Having disembarked the plane and passed through passport control, we then come to two escalators, which take you straight down to baggage reclaim. As you are about to enter this area, you will be asked by airport employees where you have travelled from, and if you have arrived from outside of Spain, as most of you will have done, you will then be guided down the correct lane where your Covid paperwork will be checked. Due to regulations changing all the time, I would recommend you check with the gov.uk website 48 hours before flying to see what these currently are. It appears that the process is by now very well streamlined and that the whole procedure is all completed quickly and efficiently with minimal disruption. Following this check, you can then proceed to the luggage reclaim belts where your suitcases and pushchairs etc will arrive. Simply search for the name of the airport from where you travelled on the LED screens, which will then tell you the luggage belt number to stand at to collect your belongings. After collecting your baggage, you will then head to the Salida or exit sign and here on the right you will pass a duty-free shop as well as information stands, advertising holiday villas and the like and offering discounted tickets for local attractions. Passing through the automatic doors, you are usually greeted by a wall of people waiting to collect their friends or family or official private transfer chauffeurs standing with name boards to collect their passengers. You are now on floor zero. On this floor, you can find various car rental companies and also the airport taxis outside, which currently charge about 85 euros to get into Benidorm. If you have opted for a transfer bus, whether this be through a private online company or your own tour operator, you should head to floor minus two. If, however, you have chosen to take the Alsa bus, which takes you directly to the bus station on Avenida Europa in Benidorm, with no stops in between, you can find this bus stop back up on the second floor where it always used to be before the pandemic. You can reach this floor by either using the elevators, which are on both your right and left hand sides, or by travelling up the escalators between each floor. Once on the second floor, you will actually be on the departures floor, where you can find a Tim Hortons coffee house and also a long white corridor which leads to the toilets. Heading outside now, you can also find a couple of handy vending machines for snacks and cold drinks, along with a Costa Coffee outlet. On your right hand side, you can find the many Elsa bus stops with handy shelters in case of rain. And these travel to Cartagena and La Manga down the south, as well as the cities of Elche and Alicante, and of course our beloved resort of Benidorm. If you haven't already purchased your ticket online, there's no need to worry, as about 15 minutes before the bus is due, a member of staff comes around asking if anyone needs to buy tickets. The Alsa staff are easily recognisable in their pale blue uniforms, and the fare into Benidorm is €9.80, with a small additional charge if you are carrying on to the seaside resort of Calpe. However, if you don't see the Alsa ticket seller for whatever reason, then don't panic as you can always pay the driver as you board. He will direct you to which side of the bus to put your suitcases on and always takes off on time on the hour, although do be aware the service stops for a two hour break in the middle of the afternoon, which can be quite inconvenient if that's when you arrive. The journey into Benidorm takes only 50 minutes with no annoying hotel stops along the way and USB charging points can be found under the seats if you have run down your electronic device's battery on the plane. There is also Wi-Fi available, although it can be a bit hit and miss as to whether this is working or not. Either way, it's a fantastic service and one I always use every time I travel. And I hope this short information piece has helped some of you who may be thinking about using the Elsa bus in future. We now visit the Hotel Flamingo Beach Resort following a recent request from a subscriber to do so. 
An imposing hotel, it is situated along Calle Esperanto and is about 15 minutes walk to the Old Town and a similar distance to the beach. Built in 1990 and then renovated in 2015, it has 126 large modern rooms over its 21 floors. If you need some emergency money when you arrive, luckily it has an ATM outside, which is handy until you find somewhere which offers a better exchange rate, for example a Euro tobacco shop. Whilst at the hotel you shouldn't spend too much though, as an all-inclusive regime is offered and you will be issued with a wristband upon check-in. The hotel offers smart, comfortable seating in the reception area and you can find a bar inside the hotel as well as the Enya bar outdoors. The arena restaurant can be found downstairs along with the Shiva beauty salon, sauna and gym. The entertainment area is outside overlooking the swimming pool area and personally I think the pool is actually quite small considering the amount of rooms that the Flamingo has. Sun lounges, parasols and cabanas are available to relax on during the day. All of the hotel's rooms have a terrace as well as a flat screen TV, free Wi-Fi and tea and coffee making facilities. Set in a slightly quieter area of Benidorm, it still has everything you may want at only a short walk away. To reach the Old Town, for example, you would turn left after coming out of reception, then walk all the way along K. Esperanto, crossing Avenida Europa as you go, and this will bring you to the main square, Plaza de la Espanidad, on the cusp of the Old Town. To reach the new town, or the beach, again turn left after coming out of reception, then more or less immediately left again, down K. Lerida, which is signposted. You can then take the first or second right down Avenida Muthia or Avenida Cuenca respectively, which will take you to the main new town area and its bars and restaurants. A short walk onwards takes you to Playa Levante and the seafront promenade. I hope this helps anyone who may be staying here in the future, and I wish you all a fabulous holiday here in Benidorm. My third video clip brings the news that Benidorm has unveiled a new state-of-the-art rescue drone that can be used for both seaside and inland rescues. Named Saturno, it is 100% Spanish-made and was demonstrated recently along the Playa Poniente or Poniente Beach. A rescue drill showcased the drone helping a swimmer who had got into difficulties in the water, and the clever machine located the potentially drowning man and then dropped a life jacket to him, which automatically opened upon contact with the sea. The drone has a surveillance and logging system that collects real-time information that can help rescue workers, especially in dangerous situations such as awkward terrain. Saturno is built to withstand all kinds of weather, including winds of up to 50 km per hour, and it has its own loudspeaker system to deliver messages and announcements. It can last about half an hour in the air before needing a recharge. Benidorm's citizen security councillor, Lorenzo Martinez, said, this type of technology represents a great advance in rescues and our obligation is to be at the forefront of technology to improve our operations and to provide the best possible service to Benidorm. And if it saves just one life over the coming months and years, then I say it is definitely worth the investment. Wouldn't you agree? My final clip shows two of those funny moments that only seem to happen in Benidorm. The first short clip was provided by a friend of mine who was walking home when he spotted a strange statue-like item lying by the bins. Unfortunately, as he picked it up to look closer, he accidentally switched his camera to black and white, so I do apologise for the vintage feel to this clip. It was incredibly heavy, apparently, and begs the question, where did it come from? Surely the bar's decoration and not something that somebody had in their own apartment. It would certainly give me the willies if it was in my living room. Then, later on that same day, he saw a man dragging a double mattress up one of the steepest hills in Benidorm at about midnight. Or was it in fact the statue come to life and in need of something to sleep on? Like I said, only in Benidorm, but I do hope it made you giggle. This brings us to the end of this sixth instalment of Benidorm Bites, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this latest information vlog with me. If you did enjoy this video, then I would ask that you please give it a thumbs up and like it, and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you would like notifications of future videos, just hit the bell notification button and you'll be informed of any new videos as soon as I upload them. Also, feel free to drop me a line in the comments section if there is something or somewhere you would particularly like me to include in the future, and as always, I'll see what I can do. I'll see you out and about next time, and thanks for watching. Cheers!